the OG city girls are really showing up the young city girls these days. You know, showing them they're the original because you better believe the younger ones got it from the OGs. We have another OG city girl that ended up as a subject of a press release posted by the United States Attorney's Office, Eastern District of Michigan, a Detroit woman serving as a director of a nonprofit is being accused of targeting low-income residents of Detroit and stealing their homes. This scam was massive on a local level. The feds say the woman stole 30 properties as a part of her scheme. She's being accused of committing deed fraud. We're going to get into it, but first, take a second to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Detroit, if you're watching from the D, drop Detroit below in the comments. Tonight, more and more African American home buyers are hearing the word denied from lenders across Detroit. And that's according to the latest Detroit City Future Study. It shows white mortgage applications have a higher approval rate compared to black applicants. Seven Action News reporter Faraz Javid gives us an in depth look at this disturbing problem that's been going on for decades and how it could stunt the community's growth. Metro Detroit is considered the nation's mortgage capital, but even then, most black borrowers are still getting rejected as they chase their dream home. There's a 13% denial rate for white borrowers and a 27% denial rate for African American borrowers just in 2020. And if an applicant moves forward, Steve Tom Kowiak from Fair Housing Center says the next blow comes during the appraisal step. The lending process overall, there's two, I think 50% of it centers on the borrower, the other 50% 50, 50 of it centers on the appraisal of the home. It's a standard requirement in every loan application that the appraisal be performed, and we are seeing an uptick in appraisal complaints. Steve says the challenges also exist for homeowners trying to sell their property. They pull down from the walls any art objects, any pictures, anything that would indicate the home's owned by a black family, and then would have someone else stand in when the appraiser has to make a home visit to the home that's being appraised, and they then saw dramatic increases in the appraised value of the home. This document shows lender denial rate in Detroit. In 2020, the highest was 89.6%. If lenders keep denying African-American borrowers, what, what happens to the city? Like, how is the city going to be impacted? That's a real problem with lending discrimination. There's a, there's a lot of effects from that. Uh, you destabilize communities, you decrease home ownership rates, you f kind of force people into more of a transient lifestyle from home to home to home. Um, some are in substandard housing because of it. No doubt about it, there are definitely issues of mortgage discrimination, an uptick in appraisal complaints, low economic development, higher property taxes, and other factors that make home ownership difficult for Black Americans in Detroit. Obtaining property isn't so simple for a lot of them, and for those who own property, maintaining their property is also a struggle, especially for low-income residents and those living on fixed incomes. Years ago, a lot of people in Detroit experienced large increases in property taxes, causing a lot of foreclosures. You had a lot of outside investors coming in, raising prices like crazy, and making it even more difficult for the people that's actually from the city. Which is why organizations like the United Community Housing Coalition are so important to the community. Short for UCHC, if you want to know what they do, they'll tell you on their website. Take a look. It says, our services help families retain their homes permanently, preserving family assets, and protecting neighborhoods from blight caused by vacant housing. The Making Home Program is a program where people who are living in foreclosed homes get the opportunity to purchase that home rather than have it go to the auction. They asked me what was going on. I explained to them my problem. And from there, they just took me by the hand and walked me through the whole process. We are celebrating 104 new homeowners, um, which brings the total up to 1,500 in the program's history. It's a great program in the sense of people don't have to worry about where they're going to live. And that's the most important thing. It gives us low income and people the chance to own a home and keep it up. To have with organizations like these, it helps the community. It keeps people in the community and you keep homes occupied instead of being vacant. 
We work with community partners who knock on doors to let clients know about us. The Wayne County Treasurer also shares our information. So it's really a joint team effort between a bunch of different entities. Make It Home is just one of the programs organized and operated by UCHC in Detroit. They provide many services from help with evictions to home repairs and foreclosure prevention. So the community was shocked to hear the recent news about one of the organization's directors, Zena Thomas. In January 2022, the OG boss chick posted this to her followers, stepping into my 58th birthday like a boss. Well, two years later, at the tender age of 60, she's about to step into an orange prison jumpsuit like a boss. As a licensed real estate agent and broker, she's been selling homes in the Wayne County area. But according to the feds, she didn't have permission from the homeowners. They're saying that Triple OG Zena was fraudulently signing the homes over to an imaginary person before selling the properties to buyers and transferring all of the proceeds to her own bank account. She worked as a director of home ownership programs for the local nonprofit where she was responsible for overseeing programs like Make It Home. Zena used her position to take advantage of vulnerable homeowners. She was supposed to be making life better for them, but she ended up stealing their homes, selling them, and profiting from those sales. Just last week, the alleged property D scammer was arrested after being investigated by the feds, where prosecutors say she stole more than 30 properties across Wayne County, most of them in Detroit. And get this, according to the criminal complaint, the triple OG city girl was living in one of those properties involved in the scheme. A leader at a Detroit nonprofit is accused of preying on low income residents and stealing their homes. Federal officials say more than 30 houses in Wayne County, primarily in Detroit, were impacted by this scheme that targeted those at risk of facing tax foreclosure. CBS News Detroit's Andres Gutierrez is at the U.S. District Courthouse with reaction. According to the federal complaint, the FBI started looking into Zenia Thomas, the director of homeownership programs at the United Community Housing Coalition last November, when a special unit within Wayne County suspected she was filing fraudulent quick claim deeds and falsifying documents. This is a pervasive crime that occurs. The problem is that the, the entry level for the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice is higher than the typical uh, fraud that occurs. But in this case, federal investigators discovered Thomas allegedly conspired to steal over 30 properties from low-income residents. Here's how the feds say the scheme worked. Thomas allegedly filed a number of phony deeds who would then transfer the target properties from the victim owners to interim owners who didn't exist before ultimately selling the house to unsuspecting third parties. And you seemingly have a number of people who are unindicted co-conspirators uh, those are people who are typically cooperating. There's also, I'm sure, other people who uh, will be interviewed and, and, uh, and will either cooperate or not. The United Community Housing Coalition says they're cooperating with the investigation and the individuals involved have been suspended. It's just disheartening that uh, an employee of a nonprofit um, would you know, take advantage of their position. Other housing advocates say this is an isolated incident that casts a shadow on their mission to help the community. This happens, um, unfortunately, uh, and, and mostly to vulnerable people, either economically disadvantaged, uh, senior citizens, Right, We see a lot of times that these kind of crimes happen to disadvantaged people, um, but there are a lot of organizations out here that are doing good. The United Community Housing Coalition works with the city of Detroit, who said in a statement they're aware of the investigation for several months and don't believe it has affected the quality service the city of Detroit is receiving from UCHC in our right to counsel and other programs. In Detroit, Andres Gutierrez, CBS News, Detroit. Apparently, the investigation started back in November 2023. The feds went into the organization and got some of the other employees to cooperate with them. Triple OG City Girl Zena was using work computers and her work email to commit fraud. Why, how stupid would I be to do that? I know one thing, I keep seeing a lot of these older boss chicks getting caught up, but they're not getting away with it these days. We're talking about a grandmother out here scheming and scamming like this, destroying the lives of the low income and the elderly at the most vulnerable time of their lives. It's really disgusting and 1000% out of order. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this below.
Special thank you to Mr. Paul B and Lash. I certainly appreciate you all for your support, as well as our sister Tanette and SL. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.